Meet sailing yacht Avanti and her crew, Gerard and Jacqueline. We left Cape Town in December 2021 on our floating home, heading west on an adventure of a lifetime around the world. In this episode, I finished the 600 hour Volvo Penta service I started a few weeks ago and I visit one of my least favorite places. We also go to Bali for a free holiday in a resort. To extract the engine oil, I've got a little 12 volt electrical um, pump and you just hook it up to the battery, put it into the dipstick or the oil extraction tube and the other end into a bottle for the used oil but it's pretty noisy. The D250 or the D255 has about 10 liters of engine oil, so it's quite a lot um, to extract and this little pump goes very slow and you can only run it maybe half an hour at a time then it gets a little bit warm, so you need to let it rest a little bit as well. <clears throat> After that I also extract the sail drive oil which is about 3 liters. While I wait for the oil pump or oil extraction pump to cool down a little bit, I'm going to start removing the seawater or raw water impeller that's used for the cooling water. So we've had this one in for about a year, but the water is quite dirty here in Indo. They can go for longer. So um, yeah, it's probably a good time to, to replace it and see how, what the condition is. Before you do this, you just need to close your seawater inlet seacocks so that you don't flood the boat and make sure you try and catch the seawater below this guy so that it doesn't make too big of a mess because the seawater is pretty corrosive um, but you can always just rinse it off with fresh water after you've removed it Once the oil is drained from the engine or sucked out in this case, you just spin off the old oil filter from the side of the engine. It just comes off by hand. It's quite tight, but it comes off. And then the new one goes in. Just apply a full, thin film of oil on the, on the seal surface and make sure the surface of where the old filter came off is clean and just spin it on and hand tighten it. Next step is to fill the engine with new engine oil. And for that I use Shell Remula Arec R4X. Um, it's quite a highly recommended oil from all the mechanics I know that work on Volvo engines. It's 15W40 and it's mineral oil. And it has the VDS3 approval from Volvo. So it's a little bit more affordable than the Volvo original oil. And from everybody's experience on the forums, it's really, really good oil. There's two options on the D250 to fill the oil. There's a filler cap at the top um, of the engine, but normally your space is a little bit uh, limited over here. There's also an alternative oil filler cap on the side of the engine, and that's the one I normally use, just because it's nice and accessible. After some sweating down in the engine bay, it's time to taste the beer. The beer I'm tasting today is quite a weird one. I wouldn't really call it a beer, but Bintang calls it a beer. It's called a Bintang Angur Mera. So we had to Google what it is. It looks like cherries on the label. And the first thing we saw was Angur Mera means red wine. So that was quite weird for us, but eventually it turned out that it's red grapes. So I suspect this is like a flavored beer that should be tasting like grapes. It's got 4.6, 4.9% alcohol. It's about 30,000 IDR in the shops. So we're definitely running out of, um, out of proper beer, proper local beer options. So let's see how this red grape beer tastes. <laughs> it 
Yeah, definitely not a beer. It's definitely a pink drink. Maybe a good cooler on a very, very hot summer's day. But in terms of a rating for this one, for beer and cost, it's definitely a 3 out of 10. It's like Fanta grape, but watered down with soda water. It's not nice. <laughs> One of the rigging checks that's a little bit harder to do is to check our chain plates. Um, so most of them are relatively accessible, but the inner four stay sits behind this, uh, well, basically piece of veneer that's in the four peak. And the chain plate is fixed to the bulkhead behind that. So you have to remove this little rack and this cover to get access. We, I did actually replace a big part of this bulkhead because it was rotten before we left Cape Town. You can see the separation line of the old and the new wood um, and I glassed it in it's fully glassed on the other side so that no water can come in and the chain plate goes through the deck on the other side so you can check that in the anchor locker but at least here I can see the wood is still solid there's no water ingress and the chain plate backing plate is still perfect it's the week of boat jobs <laughs> from cleaning the hull and next up is up the mast to finish the rigging inspection <laughs> it can't all be fun and games when i go up i normally put two halyards on two dyneema halyards so just one as a safety line and we just hoist it as we go so if one block we, or something fails, it's all good. I hoist you as I go. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And I don't like using snap shackles because you could inadvertently open them up maybe while you're up there. So for the primary line, I just use a bowline. Ready? No. Nope. Ready? Yeah. So just checking the mast, specifically the standing rigging. So any fraying on these wire ropes or any issues with the connection. A friend of us actually had these, I don't know what you call them, these stainless inserts came loose on their boat. They have to replace them every 4,000 miles, but ours are still good. Again, not my favorite place to be up here, but it has to be done. So just checking all the pins and split pins, everything is secured. There's no chafe or the, the internal mast uh, sheaves are still good and not brittle or cracked. And yeah, nice view from here of Marina del Rey. really know what he complains about I have the hardest job getting him up there oh boy we do this early in the morning so that it's not so hot but my sweat is dripping in my <laughs> sunglasses <laughs> hello so luckily I haven't seen anything weird up here and it's time to go back down to sea level What are you up to today? Today is steering cable replacement day. Uh, so we got the new set with uh, Jackie's cousins from South Africa. 
and yeah it's time to fit them i think the the old ones are still fine the one might have a little bit of chafe or broken strand on it um so I'd, i'm rather going to put in new ones and then we should be set for the indian ocean but it's tough job inside the lazarette no ventilation um so yeah here i go the steering cables that goes around the quadrant that's fixed to the rudder shaft is just secured with these Crosby clamps. So you can see the cable just is just double backed over itself and there's three Crosby clamps on each and there's one on each side. There's two steering cables. So just remove the Crosby clamps and then I need to pull out the cable through the compass on the steering wheel. The steering cables are loose at the bottom. Next step is to remove the compass so that I can extract the cables through the compass hole. So I've checked the steering cables and it's only one that's got like one strand that's not even frayed completely but yeah i decided to replace that one so one new one in the old one of the old ones are still in i've managed to slide the new one in down the steering pedestal and yeah i've checked the steering mechanism it's just a sprocket and a chain that's connected to the wheel so i've just checked that all of that's good I've tightened the, the grub screws checked for any any excessive play and it all seems good I'll just give it a, a bit of a grease because I've removed quite a bit of grease then I need to just secure the cable at the bottom and the steering should be good to go while Harat was finishing his steering cable job I came over to a local ladies restaurant where she showed me how to make the famous rindang sauce that we found to love. Ita starts by making her own coconut milk since she can't find good enough quality near the island. Then measuring by the heart, galangal, shallots, ginger, garlic, lemongrass and sweet red chilies. The mixture goes into the food processor with the coconut milk and simmers for four to five hours. It can keep in the fridge for a few days, ready to add to your choice of meat for dinner with rice. In October last year, we won a seven night stay in Bali and we decided to make use of that price closer to our departure date so that we could get any missing parts or spares that we couldn't find in Lombok. The time had finally come and we rented a scooter at the harbour and made our way over to Bali on the ferry. While in Bali, we had some time to do a long scenic scooter drive. We passed through Ubud and its monkey forest, after which we visited a waterfall towards central Bali. Most of our time was spent hunting boat parts and enjoying the cool air conditioning in our room for as long as possible. It might sound strange to some, but living in the tropics on a boat without an air conditioning and closing the hatches every time it rains 
is a sweaty affair, so an aircon is really welcome. Seven days seemed to flash past as we found ourselves back on the ferry going to Lombok. Thank you for joining us on our travels. Next episode we finally get off the mooring ball and head out to some of the other secret Gili Islands for an adventure. If you liked this week's episode, please remember to give it a like and we're looking forward to your comments. A special thank you to all our Patreons. See you in two weeks.